Hey, what up, guys? Welcome back. Um, if you're watching them back to back, that is. If not, still welcome back anyway. Maybe you just want to check out this part of the video. I'm going to be covering the Raw program from 2004. Um, this was when the brand split was still new. I first think like it's still the first era of the brand split. And Raw had its own roster, SmackDown had its own roster. Covered SmackDown, Raw 2004, the first. Uh, part of this video series, and now we're going to be doing going into Raw. So you'll see who was on, who were the top stars, and the people that were also on Raw in 2004. All right, so here's the Raw side of the program: Triple H, Shawn Benjamin, Christian, Trish Stratus, Randy Orton, Jericho, and Edge, and Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit, great wrestler terrible human being and I'll just leave it at that great wrestler though still very very terrible human being so weird seeing him like the prominent face of Raw I guess he was the face of Raw at in 2004 alright let's go on Bish Eric Bischoff was running Raw at that time as a general manager That is a lot. That is the original TLDR. <clears throat> Top stars of Raw at the time. 2004. Shawn Michaels. HBK. The Heartbreak Kid. The Legend. What can be said? Do, strong Mind for Wrestling is still wild to me that <laughs> DX eventually ended up taking over WWE, which is one of the things they tried to do in a storyline a couple times. And now in real life, they're running the show, and it, the show has never been better. Uh, Chris Benoit, again, great wrestler, terrible human being, and we're just going to move on from that. All right, we got Evolution here, Triple H, Ric Flair, Randy Orton, and Batista. These guys, they were the top heels. They were the top, top bad guys. They were like the bloodline of their time. <clears throat> And they had a bloodline finish almost every evolution match with some type of screwy finish. Batista would come in, Orton would come in. Some something screwy was gonna happen and it was not gonna be a clean finish anytime you saw these guys coming in the ring. Edge rated R superstar. He had not quite hit that era just yet. It's coming soon though, it was coming soon. Jericho Y2J, wild, AEW right there. <laughs> Shell Benjamin, strong, strong wrestler. Then you can still go today. I would kind of mad, still mad that they shut the hurt business down. Like they were just getting started, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinion too. But hurt business was. That was a stable that could have been doing very well right now in this modern climate. Kane, he's taking the mask off at this point, had the Finger Eleven song from the Punisher soundtrack. Doing, doing the thing. Christian doing his thing too at that time. And Trish Stratus, a legend. Still she's still going strong too I mean, she doesn't do as much but when she comes when she, whenever Trish Trash makes an appearance you know you're going to be left stratified like absolutely A-Train and Rhino man yeah I don't remember too much on this era then we got Garrison Cade and Test I forgot Test was around uh, this time too. Still, great soundtrack, great, uh, great entrance music for Test. Still, uh, still rest in peace to the legend. Well, he was, but yeah, he's a legend. So I'll say. Rob Conway and Sylvian Grenier. Now these guys were the un-Americans, if I remember correctly. Two French Canadians. They hated America. 
great yield in that 2004 post 9-11 era. Uh, Matt Hardy and Tajiri, great wrestlers. I think this was, yeah, this was the solo run for Matt Hardy. This was the V1, yep. Yep, because he had the, he got the neck chain there. Hurricane and Rosie. He was a huge fan of the Hurricane. Huge. And then the Rosie also. Um, one of the Rock's cousins. Rest in peace. Oh man, that Green Lantern tag. That's, I always forget that he had that because I see him mostly in the video game these days. And of course they, you know, don't put that tattoo in there because copyright. There it is. That is a dope Green Lantern tattoo. I think I should get one of, one of these days. <laughs> William Regal and Eugene. Now you talk about gimmicks that would not fly in 2024. Eugene. Real name Nick Dinsmore. Uh, played Eugene the mentally challenged nephew of Eric Bischoff. And he would come in to the ring and like do imitations of other superstars. He had a, a run. He definitely had a run. That is a gimmick that would not fly today. I mean, in one, on in on some level though, it's a it's like empowering. But on the other hand, it's no. It's it just would not fly. It would not. Chuck Palumbo, Stephen Richards, and Val Venus. I, for, I always forget that Val Venus was still here at the time. Like, I remember him in, like, the 90s added here, but I forgot about this post-right to censor era. I think that's what all three of these guys were doing then. Like, post-right to censor. It's kind of there. Heidenreich. <laughs> Now that's the guy that I thought I saw the debut of, but now he would, had been doing his thing already here on Raw. And Johnny Nitro, John Morrison, whatever name he goes by, Johnny, no, not not Johnny Wrestling, that's Gargano, but whatever name he goes by, you're always in for a good match with John Morrison. Stacy Keebler, another person who came over, woman who came over from WCW, but really made her mark on the women's division in WWE as a actual wrestler. Lita, what can be said? One of the greatest women wrestlers of all time, I would say, hands down. I remember when she came in on Saturday Night Heat in 98 with S.A. Rios. She was already the star of the two. Only went with the Hardy Boys, done, did her own thing as well. Absolute legend. Absolute legend. Victoria. Mm. She was great. She had she had a nice run in WWE. Uh, Nitty and Gail Kim. You know, I always forget Gail Kim was in WWE first. Because she made a real name for herself over in TNA. Molly Holly. Oh, this was with the, the shaved, shaved head era. Molly Holly and Jazz. Jazz underrated, in my opinion. She should have gotten more. She should have done more. She she had a look. She had a great move set. Like she was good. I was a Jazz fan back in the day. <laughs> Jonathan Coachman and Al Snow. <laughs> And the commentary team, the legends, Jim Ross, Jerry the King Lawler, two of the best to ever sit in those booths. These two were the voice of Raw when I was not growing up, but when I was younger <laughs> and a fan. I'm still a fan now, but when I was younger, these two were the voice of Raw. Hands down. And we go with the merch. Shout out. Man, that Chris Benoit shirt. 
did not age well. That HBK shirt could easily be like repurposed for a Drew McIntyre shirt today. Chris Jer I like that throwback Chris Jericho style shirt. That's cool. There we are, the superstars of Raw. And that's that. Uh, join me next time when I get into 2005 Raw and SmackDown rosters. Uh, now this was a good. This was a good show. This show here, um, the Raw show that I went to when I got this program, uh, was when Jericho was Jericho's final show in WWE from his first run. And I will leave you with that for now. Stay tuned for that video next time.